Jamie, and you are watching the Dr. Jamie YouTube channel, 15 Minutes to Fear Superwoman Workshop Series. Today I am so excited to have you with me. The purpose of the 15 Minutes to Fierce workshops is to inspire you, motivate you, and pump you up for the week to come. I will provide you with tips and tools that you can use to set goals and find fulfillment and happiness during the week. Before we begin, it is always important to have a pen and paper somewhere handy where you can take notes. Uh, so let's jump right in as long as you have that pen and paper handy and a positive mindset. Today, what we are going to focus on in this 15 Minutes of Fear seminar series is prioritizing and saying no. Whether you are reading the book, The Superwoman's Guide to Super Fulfillment, or you come in as a client of mine, the very first thing that we will do together is identify your priorities. What's important to you in life? What gets you going and motivates you on a day-to-day -day basis? So I like to call these priorities your life roles. So go ahead on your piece of paper and write the word life roles. What are life roles? Life roles are going to be all of the things that you do day in and day out, week by week, month by month, that uh, are any role that you play. So maybe every day you're playing spouse and you're playing a caregiver and you're playing mom and you're playing employee. All of these roles that you do go on the list. Those are your primary life roles, but you also have secondary life roles, things that you have to do anyway, like the laundry and the grocery shopping. Maybe you're the family CPA, the dog walker, or the therapist to negative Nancy in the office. I've been there before. So um, let's go ahead right now and take a moment together to write out these life roles. So while I'm talking right now, go ahead and start. I'll talk through mine, and then as I continue on, go ahead and keep writing your uh, life roles. The average woman has between 15 and 20 life roles, so take the time to really think about these life roles. Let's begin. All right, so for me, I'm gonna be mother, I'm going to be a spouse, I'm going to be author. Professor. I'm definitely the laundry doer. Um, I'm also going to put down coach and I'm going to be the uh, family dog walker. We don't have a dog, but I feel like I'm so busy that I walk a dog every day. So I'm going to put down dog walker. All right. So while I'm talking, continue to go ahead and write down the list of life roles. Now, the next step is I want you to go ahead and I want you to circle the top five life roles. Five, not six, not seven, five life roles. So I'm going to put, these are your top ones. So I know that you have to do everything on this list. I know, I get it, I do it too. But I want you to go ahead and just circle your very top five, okay? Okay, so if you look at my list and we count together, something is missing on mine. One, two, three, four. So, trick question, ladies. Uh, what is missing from my list? Ah. Did you make the list? Did the word me make the list at all? All of these things encompass you, I get it, but did you specifically make that list? In most of my workshops, women do not put themselves on the list. In fact, one of the things that inspired me to help motivate women across the world is because I noticed that my clients didn't put them on their list, and sometimes I didn't put me on the list. This leads to a life of lack of fulfillment and reduction in happiness. So make sure that you are on the list and the requirement for this activity as that you make the top five. All right, let's move on. Why is it so important to know your top five life roles? Well, because when you don't feel in, balanced in life, you go to these top five roles and you see what's wrong with them. It's kind of like a self-check, checks and balances. I don't feel right, something's going on, what isn't working? Ah, do I feel like I'm not being a good mom lately? Do I feel like I'm not giving enough attention to my spouse lately? Ah, 
Have I forgot I even made the top 100 list, perhaps? So when you feel not balanced, you do a check, you give a little bit more to that specific area, things seem a little bit brighter. When these roles are balanced, the rest of your life seems balanced. You feel a little more fulfilled, a little more uplifted, and everything else on your list seems to get done a little bit easier, okay? Now, I want you to write down the word dedicated time. This is the whole quality versus quantity. When you are in the moment with any of these life roles, you want to give them the quality or the dedicated time. So I don't necessarily mean that um, all you do day in and day out is focus on these roles, but rather when you're in the moment with that role, that's all you're focusing on. We are in a society that is so focused on multitasking and doing so many different things at once that sometimes we find we've spent four hours with our children and we haven't even said a word to them. We've texted, we've checked Facebook, we've done work, we've done a little reading, the laundry is done, the dishes are done, the meal is served, but we haven't actually spent time in that particular role. So it's important to, as a mother, let's say, to get in, get on the floor with the kid, your child, and play Thomas the Train for 35 minutes with them. Instead of spending four hours of time, which is the quantity, but not giving them that dedicated quality time. Same with being a spouse. If you go on a date with your spouse, don't talk about the kids, don't talk about work. Be present in the moment and enjoy your spouse. Again, that's dedicated time, all right? Then, when all of these life roles seem to be flourishing, you can say, you know what? I think that my top five, including myself, is feeling pretty good. All right, so that's why it's so important to know your life roles. I want to go ahead and I want to move on. So now you know your priorities, your, your primary, you know your secondary. You know what to do when you feel that you're not in balance in your life. Now we're going to get back some time by saying the dreaded word. Say no, okay? This is equal to the F-bomb, I swear. Um, because no is a powerful word. It is a word that a lot of women don't like to use. We are people pleasers by nature. So when we say no, uh, we have not satisfied something inside of us. When I say yes, you smile, you're happy, I'm like yes, I've made that person feel great. But then when I walk away, I'm walking away with more roles, roles that aren't consistent with my top five, roles that are not on my list. Um, and that brings me into that imbalance in life. So we want to work on saying no. No actually portrays, gives off this sense of confidence, this sense of control over your life. So remember, when you say no, the payoff is in the end. When you get a walk away and you don't have extra life roles and extra tasks to take on. So how do we say no? Well, I can tell you how we don't say no. We don't say no by putting our hand up in someone's face and turning around and walking away. There is a very professional and respectable way to say no. And number one is going to be resources. You see, when you've become the official go-to person, People come to you thinking that you're going to accept the task, never expecting you to say no. Now you've thrown them for a loop and you're about to say no. What does that do? It provokes anxiety in that person. Well, now where do I turn to? What do I do? You're my go-to. Sometimes in men, the anxiety actually would come out in anger and they might be upset with you for saying no. So what you want to do is give them resources to calm that anger and that anxiety. So a situation might go like this. Mike, thank you so much for bringing this project to me. I appreciate uh, that you think that I will be able to take this on and, and lead the team. However, you deserve 100% dedicated time to this project and I know right now I can't give you that. But and here's where the butt comes in. But I have some resources handy uh, in the folder and on my computer back at the office. 
allow me to go back and send you these resources to help you get jump started. What has that done for you? One, you've increased your credibility. So you have resources, you have additional opportunities or um, additional ways to help this person move forward. Instant credibility raise. Number two, what this has done for you is you have shown confidence and self-control. Confidence and self-control. Your ability to say no exudes this confidence and this control over your life. You want to know one way to best reduce your credibility? That is going to be to say yes to a project, yes to a person, yes to a task. And then halfway through, take that yes back. That really ruins your credibility. So be very cautious in saying yes. It's better to say no and provide resources than say yes and take that yes back. Number two, the second way to go ahead and say no. Provide alternatives. This is very close to resources. You're providing additional ideas for that person to begin or step off their project. You're suggesting other team members or other people. You're opening the door of opportunity to them beyond yourself. So providing alternatives. One thing is very important. I don't want you to fear saying no for the loss of opportunity. I wanna give you a short personal story here. Along my journey, I found myself saying yes to every opportunity that came my way. In fact, in one situation, I remember being at a networking group. At this point in my life, um, I remember that I wasn't giving to any of my top five life roles. I was depleted. My husband was depleted. I wasn't giving time to my children. I wanted to grow the business, and I put that as a precedence. But instead of just putting the business up at the top, everything else that came with it, taking care of the accounting, taking care of the networking, all of that took precedence in my life. It became draining. I walked into a networking uh, event for this group I was part of one day, and I remember crying on the way, on the drive into this networking event, and I got myself together. I was crying because I was so overwhelmed and so unfulfilled in my life. And I get myself together, dry off the tears like we do, kind of do the blowing thing. I got my hair like blowing from the, the air conditioning coming out of the vents in my car to perk myself up. Um, and I walk in and I'm feeling good and I'm feeling confident at this point. And the president of the association comes up to me and he says, Jamie, perfect, you're the person I wanted to see. And I'm thinking, why? Um, and he says, you know, I've been thinking, I really want you to take on a major leadership role to roll out this new program. And I vividly remember like a movie sitting there and my mind is screaming, no, 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 you know, like in the movies where they got the head going, no, no, I felt that. And then I said, yes, of course, I would love to do that. And at that moment, I crashed and burned, and that moment changed my life forever. And speaking of credibility, uh, I did end up taking my yes back at some point. So I ruined my credibility, and I didn't show self-control. I didn't provide resources. I didn't give uh, additional alternatives. At that moment, my biggest concern was the fear of loss of opportunity. That if I said no to this, I wouldn't be asked for any other future leadership roles. And that is a myth. That is something that is negative self-talk that warped me into saying yes to something I shouldn't have taken on. So I challenge you when you say no to walk away confident and walk away with a mind that is open to more opportunity. I can tell you right now in my life, I have never said no more, yet I have never been presented with more opportunity in my life. I wanna leave you with that note as you walk along your journey this week. Know that it's okay to say no so that you can keep balance in your life and know that there will be opportunity out there for you every single day for this week and next week and the week after and the year after. 
If you enjoyed this 15 minutes of Fierce presentation, I encourage you to join us again every Tuesday and Thursday for more 15 minutes of Fierce workshops. Go ahead and visit me at drjamiek.com for more information. I'll see you at the next 15 minutes of Fierce. Bye!